Thank you, Kushlani, uh, for your kind introduction. And uh, uh, let's go to the session directly. I think my introduction is more than enough. Um, Suha and Wanji given you a, a better idea about uh, what is meant by streaming applications and streaming SQL. In my session, I'm planning to cover how to write uh, these streaming applications and uh, what are the common known patterns are available when writing streaming applications. And also, how WSO2 stream processor can help you to build those streaming applications and what are the options are available to build them and what are the options are available to deploy them. We'll discuss a bit more deep into that in this session. And uh, uh, I don't want to go to the what is mean by streaming or streaming data. Already so and Wanji covered that. The most important characteristic in streaming is the time taken to make a decision or how fastly we can detect a condition. Uh, based on that, we can divide into three phases. One is real time, other one is the near real time, other one is the offline. And streaming data or streaming, it's mainly come under the real time and the near real time. And, uh, <clears throat> and those two factors are the main important factors. Those uh, real time and the near real time, it's a very important factor when it's come to the streaming data. And uh, Next question is why we need streaming apps. As for Forrester, streaming apps are required to identify perishable insights and also those help you for the continuous integration and also orchestration for the business process. At the same time, uh, it also helps to sense, think, and act, for the, act in the real time for the streaming data. And uh, we talked about uh, the ways of building streaming application in the SUA slide also. The first option is you can code it by yourself. Uh, if you are a developer, you can code it by yourself. You can build it from the scratch. It's great. It's fine. Another option is using a stream processor. If you are using a stream processor, uh, then you will get, a, get the features or the capabilities of the stream processor, like scalability, high availability, those features. But you have to build uh, that complete end-to-end -end event logic or the complete end-to-end -end the logic uh, some using some programming language and you have to write it by yourself. The other option is using a streaming SQL-based stream processor. At that time, you will get the scalability, high availability, those features from a stream processor. At the same time, streaming SQL help you to build those streaming apps very quickly. At the same time, it will help you to change them uh, in a very short time. That's the advantage of getting, you're using a streaming SQL-based stream processor. Uh, now let's go to <clears throat> go and discuss further on what is uh, on patterns in writing streaming applications. And uh, before moving to the uh, details on streaming application patterns, we need to identify why we need patterns for streaming applications. The important requirement is by using patterns, you will understand what stream processing actually can do. And also, you can easily solve the common known problems in the streaming world using the well-known patterns. And uh, you will quickly identify where to apply which pattern and what you can solve from that. At the same time, you can apply the best practices that is known for that pattern, uh, known for that problem, and using the pattern. And uh, these are the uh, common patterns that we identified uh, and we are going to discuss in this uh, talk. And uh, uh, these are not actually fixed patterns. These are based on our experience throughout the years with the customers and all. But over the years, it can change. We'll add uh, new patterns. Some patterns might deprecate over the time. And uh, for this talk, I'm going to use WSO Stream Processor to explain about these patterns and to write these patterns using streaming SQL. And uh, as, as shown here, this is an analytics, analytics offering provided by WSO2. And uh, it has the complexity and processing capabilities, incremental simultaneous reaggregation, and the machine learning likewise. We'll discuss about all of them in very detail in next slides. Now, question is, what are important features? Why WSO2 stream processor? The, there are a few characteristics you want to identify. One is the cloud-native cloud nature of WS3 stream processor. It's very lightweight, lean. And also the streaming SQL nature, as so mentioned, which we called as CDSQL. And uh, high performance 
of the stream process. You can achieve around 100K events per second throughput with just two nodes when you don't have a database integration use cases. And uh, it has the machine learning support. You can perform long-term aggregations, uh, which is one of the replacement for a Spark Weight approaches that we have had in the past. And also, it provides tools for business users to write your CD apps, sorry, to write your streaming application very quickly. And uh, uh, now we discuss about the pat streaming, why we need streaming application and what are the patterns available. Before moving into more detail, we need a use case to discuss that. Let's use an online shopping application as our use case to discuss this whole patterns. Uh, this is a simple uh, use case where we place an order uh, to an online application and the order goes to, a, we process the order. At the same time, the, we process the payment as well. And once we process the order, we send it that for a delivery. And uh, <clears throat> with this use case, what we are trying to identify is how to use streaming applications to monitor the sales, supply, and delivery, how to optimize the sales, how we can predict the sales and the demand, and also recommend, provide recommendation for the sales for the users when you are buying products, and uh, how to manage and visualize the whole process. And the uh, first pattern that we are going to discuss is streaming data pre-processing. In the streaming data pre-processing, there are a few phases. First thing is consume even from multiple sources. The second point is convert them to into streams and filter in those streams based on some conditions. And uh, uh, add defaults or missing fields to that and uh, f format those uh, incoming events and how to change the event structure and convert into another event structure. Those are the, some uh, phases in the data pre-processing. And uh, <clears throat> this is a simple example on how to define a stream in streaming SQL world. This is written in the CD SQL. If you can see here, uh, we have a very simple uh, uh, statement where we have a defined stream and we have a stream name. After that, we'll define the, the structure of the stream. Structure of the stream means what are the attributes are there in the stream. Simply, we have the attribute name and the attribute type. And uh, in, uh, in the stream browser, the way of write the, the streaming application we call that CD app. And for CD app, we are giving a name for it. That's what we mentioned that app name, online shopping analytics. Now, <clears throat> let's say we have defined a stream. But we want to receive event from different sources to that stream. For that, there are multiple event sources are available. That means we can receive events from multiple uh, transports, like MQTT, HTTP, TCP, Kafka. Various transports are available with WSL stream browser. And also, you can extend them as well. And uh, from these transports, you can receive data in different formats, like JSON, XML, text, WSOT event, likewise, they can receive this data in different formats. And, uh, <clears throat> and to specify that specific uh, uh, event consuming and the mapping part, you will have an annotation like at source, and you will define what type of source you have to receive events, and you have to simply have a what type of mapping you have to do. For example, if you receive a JSON event, it is just a matter of JSON map, map typing. And if it's XML, just XML like that. The important thing is there are two types of mappings are available. One is the default mapping and the custom mapping. Default mapping means you have to send the event in the predefined format. We have a defined format. You have to send it in that format. If you, another one is the custom mapping. That means you have your own data format. Then it's a matter of providing a mapping at stream processor level. If it's a JSON, you have to provide a JSON mapping. If it's XML, it's a XPath or something. <coughs> The other one is we define the stream, we receive the event. Next thing is how to write a query for that. Right here, we have a simple pass-through query where we receive the event and uh, to the stream called product purchase stream. After that, we are simply selecting all the events and insert into another stream called possible discount product stream. It's a simple pass-through query that we can write. And let's say we want to have a filter. We want to filter out some events from that. For example, if uh, quantity is greater than 5 and the product ID is XYZ, then we'll say it is possible uh, purchase for a discount. Then we'll filter out only those events 
and so on, send those events to a, another stream called possible discounts product stream. And uh, if you want to do some transformation like uh, uh, manipulations like here, let's say the purchase is uh, done from a currency called euro, then we want to convert the, that whole price into a USD, then it's a matter of multiplying that into 1.17 and convert it into USD price. At the same time, we'll define USD as the currency. We're adding another f attribute for the stream, and we are mentioning that as a currency. This is one type of transformation that you can do. Likewise, you can do very complex transformation as well. And uh, <clears throat> we, can, uh, we send those output into a stream called possible discount stream. Now, <clears throat> we already done transformation, where we simply do a manipulation, multiplication and do the transformation. Let's say you have a predefined custom UDF, or let's say uh, WStream process container predefined method for that, then it's a matter of calling that method. You don't have to write that manipulation custom thing by yourself, you can use those methods. At the same time, you can add your custom UDF as well, and use it at the streaming query level. Uh, now we have <clears throat> done with the data preprocessing part. The next pattern that we are trying to talk about is data store integration. And uh, by using a data store integration pattern, you allow, we can perform search, insert, delete, update, insert, update, those operations on top of a data store. Uh, the data store can be an in-memory data store, or it can be RDBMS, or it can be a MongoDB. There are a few types of data stores are supported. And uh, at the same time, you can perform query optimizations or by using primary key indexes and the index keys. You can access or search the data very quickly, figure it out the data quickly, or delete the data quickly. Likewise, you can optimize those operations. And uh, this is a simple way of defining uh, a data store. Um, we simply say it's as an event table in another way in streaming uh, SQL where we'll define as table, define table, we'll define a name for it, and likewise how we are defining the stream, we'll define the, the table structure. And uh, if you want to add a primary key or an index for the, the table or data store that you have already defined, then it's a matter of adding a, another annotation called primary key or annotation called index. Let's say you have an external database, like a RDBMS, or if you have another data store like MongoDB, HBase, Cassandra, or Sola, or Asylcast. At that time, it's a matter of pointing that external data source using some options. For example, if you have a RDBMS store, then you have to add an annotation called at store, and the type is RDBMS, and you have to provide some other fields like connection URLs and those things. And you can mirror that external data store as an event table at the stream processor world, and you can do manipulations with that. And uh, this is a simple query for that. For example, we have external table called user table, which is there in the RDBMS uh, data store. And here what we are doing is from shopping checkout stream, we are selecting the user ID, session ID, and the amount and we are inserting into a user table. That means underneath we are actually talking with the external database which is there. Likewise, here we are doing insertion. You can do a deletion, update, insert or update, those operations, all the operations that you can do with the database. The, the next pattern that I'm going to talk is aggregation over time periods. Uh, aggregation over time periods you can do, there are two levels. You can do aggregation with the short time and you know, long time periods. And uh, we support both many aggregation operations like sum, count, max, uh, min, average, percentile, max forever, likewise. There are multiple aggregations are supported. And uh, if you want to do aggregation over a short time, then we have a construct called Windows. Uh, Windows is a way of uh, limiting or the way of uh, grouping the incoming streaming event and do manipul working with that. And uh, Windows, there are two types. One is the sliding Windows. There's another type called batch Windows. And also, there are other flavors like uh, time, length, unique. Likewise, there are various flavors on top of sliding and batch Windows. If you take this specific query, 
we are from the product purchase stream, we are sending those events to a, a time window, which is a one minute window, and we are doing a sum on top of that window, for example, sum quantity and total quantity. And we are then group buying based on the product ID, and the output will be sent to the another stream called last minute purchase stream. Right? Here, it's, what we are doing is we are doing a short term aggregation for one minute, and we are calculating the sum. Let's say that you want to do a long term aggregation. Uh, the question that also asked by uh, about uh, DAS and what is the change over the stream processor. And uh, in the long term aggregation, in the past, we have used DAS, the Spark capabilities for the long term aggregation. The, what we have done with the stream processor, we have improved the Siddhi CP engine to do the long term aggregations with the use of uh, typical RDMS databases. And we do the aggregation for second. From second, we'll do the minute. From minute, we'll do hour. Likewise, we'll go until the year. By using that approach, using that Lambda approach, we are achieving the long-term aggregations, which, we, which uh, compensate the, the things that we have done in the Spark in the past. If you take this query, you can understand uh, clearly. We are defining aggregation, define aggregation, We'll define a name called purchase aggregation. And from product purchase stream, we are selecting the product ID, the sum, and also we are um, sum means sum in the price and the quantity multiplied by that. And also we are sum in the number of items purchased. And we are grouped by the product ID and aggregate for every second to year. That means we are sec from seconds to year means we are aggregating for seconds, then for minute, from hour, a day, month we are aggregating until year. That means we have the per second granularity, we can do the uh, uh, aggregation and get the data, get the output. Um, in the last two patterns, I talked about event stores or data stores, how to integrate with the external data stores, and what are the uh, aggregation, long-term aggregation that we can do. Now, we have done the aggregation. Or we have done the integration with the external data store. Now, how to get that summarized data? How to get those aggregated data? Right? For that, we have an interactive data search uh, provided by us. Uh, and uh, it has both REST and the Java way of getting those summarized data. And uh, <clears throat> this is a simple query that you can use. For example, let's say you have already defined an aggregation in the last slide. right? Uh, now we want to get the data, which is already aggregated. For that, you can use a query like this. from purchase aggregation on product ID, which is equal to XYZ, within this time range, 2018, May 1st to June 1st, and get data from a per data granularity, and select product ID, total amount and number of items. Likewise, it provides a very simple way of, streaming way of getting those data back. And you have the both Java and REST API way of getting this data as well. And uh, and at the same time, WS Stream Processor have a very rich dashboard functionalities, uh, which allow you to uh, uh, generate the widgets by a gadget generation wizard. You don't have to write a, a, a wizard by coding by yourself. It have a, a nice uh, wizard which allow you to build or create the widgets, and also it have multiple ways of getting data from other data pro uh, providers. Like I already mentioned about the data aggregation, where it, you can use the same REST API and get the data and show how the aggregation can be done. Uh, it's done. And also, it can also talk with the RDBMS and get the data. And also, it has support for WebSocket, where it can connect to a real income in streams and, and show the data in a streaming manner in the dashboard itself. And also, uh, these dashboards are uh, uh, supports like local associations and also permission level supports also they are in the dashboards. This <coughs> uh, is some quick thing. And uh, other pattern that I want to discuss is KPI analysis and alerts. This is one of the uh, common pattern in uh, CEP or complex event processing uh, for long years. And uh, 
the important thing is you can identify the KPIs using a filtering, which I have already talked about, and you can use a, some construct called if then else constructs. And the other one, let's say you find out the KPIs, now it's a matter of alerting them to the uh, prospected parties. Uh, <clears throat> now, let's say you identified some KPI in this query. We have some, the last query from shopping payment stream. We are doing a, uh, shopping, after that we are doing a payment. And the shopping payment stream, if the payment is successful, and we are sending those events to a, another stream called successful payment stream. And if you check the, the top part of it, the second query, where we define the stream called successful payment stream, and we have a sync for that. Sync is a way of uh, telling what to do after for these streams, or what, uh, where to send those information. For example, once you find out the successful uh, payment here, we are sending an email to the customer saying, your order is placed successfully. Here we have used a sync type called email, and likewise, there are types like HTTP, MQTT, same as the source. You have the multiple transport types that you can use to publish the data to outside world or different endpoints. The other one is the <coughs> even correlation and the trend analysis. And uh, <coughs> here there are two patterns. One thing is the pattern, other one is the we call as trend or sequences. Patterns can be something to find out whether something happened followed by another thing that we are trying to find pattern. For example, the credit card transaction, fraud transaction that one just talked about. Other one is the non-occurrence. Let's say you have done some transaction, you are waiting for some payments, and it's not coming for some time. That is a non-occurrence type of patterns. Other one is the identify patterns. You will uh, look at the stream of events continuously and try to find out some trends based on the incoming streams. That's what we call trends. And if you are going to write a pattern query, here is actually we have written a non-occurrence pattern query, where we have a, sh a stream called shopping checkout stream. Again, we have another stream called shopping payment stream. And uh, let's say we are getting event to the shopping checkout stream. And after that, uh, we are waiting for 15 minutes. And we are checking whether there is a payment for that specific checkout. If there is no payment for that specific checkout for 15 minutes, that's what we said not for 15 minutes, then we'll say it as it's a payment delayed stream. Likewise, you can identify the non-occurrences. Other one is the sequences or trends. Here actually what we are trying to identify is whether the purchase or the sales are reducing over the time for last few minutes. For example, here what we have done was we have checked the uh, Purchase is done last minutes, and we are trying to find out whether that purchase are reduced over the time. That's what we are trying to do with this trend analysis query. <coughs> the next one is the real-time predictions. <coughs> real-time prediction can be done in two levels at WSO2 stream processor. The one thing is you can use the pre-built and pre-trained model and you can integrate that with the stream processor, and you can do predictions. The second option is uh, the online streaming model, where stream processor can learn from the incoming data. With the learned knowledge, it can do predictions. Those are the two options are available with the stream processor. And uh, <clears throat> if you are going to use the pre-built model, for example, PMML-based model, where you build the model, and you can <coughs> uh, attach that to a to a query. After that, you can make a prediction on top of that model. And uh, let's say you want to do a continuous learning and prediction on that. And for that, also you have capabilities with the WS stream processor, where if you take about two queries, uh, we are getting events from a shopping checkout stream. After that, we are training our model, like offering train model. And after that, using that training model, we are doing predictions. We are trying to write predictions at the light of that. That means we are learning. At the same time, we are doing predictions. Now we talked about <coughs> the patterns. What are the patterns that you can write in the stream processor? These are uh, very common patterns that we have identified uh, with our customers and, and the common use case that they identified so far. And now question is how to manage those streaming patterns. 
uh, for a non-technical user, uh, let's say non-technical user is using WSS stream processor, at that time, he'll get uh, some tool called business rules, <coughs> business rules server, uh, business rules monitor in the WSS stream processor, where it allows them to write uh, stream processing rules from the scratch. At the same time, they can write uh, from a templated manner. For example, let's say a developer is known about the stream processing and the streaming SQL. He can write the query and he can template those threshold uh, and he can deploy that into a server. Then the non-technical user or the business user can change those threshold by using a, a very form-based form UIs rather than worrying about the streaming queries. He can simply change those threshold and uh, adjust those threshold and get it work. And the second one is <clears throat> we have our own developer studio where it provides capabilities for editor and also it has the capability for debugging, simulation, testing. And we support both source editor and also the drag and drop editor. And, uh, <clears throat> and the source editor is, is for the user who can write streaming SQL query very quickly. And if the user is not like much about writing streaming SQL by coding them, then they can use the graphical editor and write them. <clears throat> Other than that, we ha also have some IDE tools, like we have an IDE tool for the IntelliJ IDE pairing, where you can write the same thing in the IntelliJ IDE as well. Uh, now let's say we have discussed about the streaming application, and we uh, wrote those streaming applications. Now the question is about how to deploy those streaming applications. And stream processor provides you two approaches. First approach is uh, minimum high availability deployment, where you can go with two nodes. Um, you can achieve 100k events per second just with two nodes. And uh, it provides you the zero downtime and zero event loss. Uh, and uh, you don't require any other uh, components. Just two nodes uh, would be enough to go with a minimum mature deployment. The other one is the distributor deployment. The distributor deployment is uh, done on top of uh, Kafka. We are using Kafka for uh, our distributor deployment, where uh, what you have to do is you have to write a streaming application, which I already shown in uh, in previous slide, and you have to annotate those uh, streaming application. How many parallel processing nodes are required, or how many parallel how it needs to be divided, and based on the annotation that streaming application will be divided automatically and distributed into multiple nodes, and they run and get the summarized data. In our tutorial session, I'll explain more on that, how distributed processing can be done, what is the approach that you can follow. And this is a simple way of uh, uh, showing that way how to write the distributed thing with Kafka, distributed deployment with Kafka. Now we <coughs> written or wrote about uh, streaming application, and we now deploy those streaming applications. Now, how to monitor those streaming apps? Uh, WS Stream Processor provides you with a status dashboard, which allows you to monitor the end-to-end uh, -end life cycle of the uh, streaming application. And once you deploy, you can verify how those st uh, streaming applications are, uh, how streaming applications are deployed, and um, how they are running in different nodes, whether those streaming applications are active, and uh, what are the queries are running in those nodes. And uh, also, you can see the CPU utilization, memory utilization, likewise, more details about those uh, uh, complete deployment. And also, it provides very detailed information about uh, well, streaming and the use, use cases. And it will help you to uh, uh, avoid more uh, uh, things that you do deal with the DevOps things and provide you a better way of understanding your streaming application deployment. And to summarize, <coughs> in my talk, what I covered was I've given you some introduction about the streaming analytics and how to manage those streams and how to write streaming SQL language. And also, uh, and I also covered some details about the stream process capabilities and features. And uh, most importantly, we covered about the patterns of stream processing and why patterns are required when writing stream processing and how WSU stream processor can help you to build those patterns and what are the options are there 
if you want to deploy those streaming applications in a real environment, and what are the benefits that you get when writing with WS Stream Processor. Uh, we'll discuss more detail these things in our next session, in our tutorial session with a live demo. And uh, thank you. <laughs>